Hey, welcome again. Employment Law Show, John Scholes alongside Lior Samfiru here to fill your head full of very useful and in this case necessary employment law knowledge. Here's how you reach out during the show anytime. 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca and throughout the show we'll make reference to a website that is absolutely free and anonymous for you to use. And that would be pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Lior on the show today, five things you should do if you are fired, laid off or let go from your job. That's coming up here in just a little bit but we always start with a uh, situation that you've been dealing with of late uh, a bit of a week that was how you doing pal john doing great uh you know every time we do this show right here people watch it i, I turn off uh, my my camera and i go back to check my emails or my voicemails a lot of calls because a lot of people that that hear the show or watch the show learn something new and, and it triggers something a question an issue a problem mm -hmm. that they now understand they can get help with that's why it's so great and i feel so privileged to have this forum here to talk to people and educate people about employment law about workplace rights about your rights as an employee your rights as an independent contractor your rights if you've been laid off lost your job if your job is changed if you're being mistreated or harassed bullied in the workplace what you do in those situations, this is the time, this is a, the place that we discuss all those things. I try to help as much as I can. And if I don't cover everything that you want to know during this 30-minute show, not a problem. We'll give you my contact information throughout the show so you can reach out to me so we can have a discussion about your particular and personal situation. I assure you there's no bad questions. There's only answers and solutions. The law, employment law, is quite good and extensive, and there, there is a solution for whatever situation you may be facing in the workplace. And as a good example of that, let me tell you about a, a very real situation that came across my desk very recently. Uh, I spoke with a gentleman who has been in a sales role for over 11 years with the same company and always had his compensation comprised of a base salary plus commissions. So roughly half his salary from his, was base salary, the other part of it was uh, commissions. And he was fine, he's made a good income, well, very recently, a company comes to him and says, well, because of COVID, we need to make some changes. We don't want to be paying salaries anymore because it, it puts us in a precarious financial situation. So instead of that, you're going to go on 100% commissions. So no more base salary, just commissions. But because you're such a good salesperson, we're sure that you're not actually going to see a pay cut. In fact, maybe you'll even see a pay increase because you're getting 100% commission. So we're sure you're going to be fine with it. Well, he wasn't fine with it, and he called me, and he wanted to know what are my rights. Do I have to accept this? Is this legal? Can they do this? So here's the interesting thing, John. It's quite possible that his overall compensation is not going to change, that he's not actually going to take a pay cut here. But what he is doing is he is now taking a lot more risk, whereas before he had a guaranteed base salary, no matter what, he got paid a salary. Now, there's no guarantee he's taking a risk. You either are successful or you don't get any income. That is a significant change to the terms of employment. Taking a salesperson and making them 100% commission when they were not 100% commission before is a big deal. It's a big change. And it's the type of change that an employer does not have a right to make, even if it doesn't reduce your salary, your overall compensation. So what does this mean? It means that he now has a right to treat this change as a constructive dismissal. Hopefully our regular uh, viewers know this term already, constructive dismissal. That's what happens when your boss changes your job, your pay, your compensation, your pay structure, your responsibilities. If you're in that situation, if you're facing a significant change, you may have the option, just like this person, to treat that as a termination, to treat that as a constructive dismissal and get your severance. For him, that means one year's pay. He's been there for over 11 years. About a year's pay is what he'd be owed here. And he would much rather do that, get his severance, than continue working on 100% commission. So very important for those of you, whether you're in sales or, frankly, in any role, if your commission or your compensation structure changes, whether it's reduced or not, even if it's just the structure that changes, that may be something that's illegal. That may be something you can treat as a constructive dismissal. If you find yourself in that situation, please reach out to me as soon as possible. If he had turned around and maybe thought about it for a while and said, you know what, they might be right. I might do 20, 30% better simply on commission. I'd kind of 
Maybe I should just take this out for a spin for a little bit, see if it works, and then if it doesn't work, then I want to uh, not accept it. Could he do that? Does he have a bit of a window to try it out? Yes, he could have tried it and see how he felt about it. It's a small window, I would have said, maybe in this situation, a month, maybe two months, but he would have had to tell them in writing that that's what he's doing. He could have said, I'm not very comfortable with this. I'm not sure if I can accept this, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try this for the next 60 days, and then I'll let you know how I feel about it. At the end of that 60 days, he could have then potentially still said either accept or no, this is a constructive dismissal. But he would have had to establish from the beginning that that's what he's doing. If he simply continued working and didn't say anything, he would have been considered to have accepted that change. And once you accept the change, you can't really do anything about it. Website to go to anytime, employmentlawyer.ca. While you're there, lots of information, of course, but you'll get links to our long-running radio show, which has been... Dare I say about 10 years, I think we've been doing radio. So uh, we get a lot of phone calls every week on the show. Doesn't matter what market here or uh, Alberta, BC, we're all across the country. And a lot of people phone in, they want information right live on the air. So what we do is we, we cherry pick some of the good ones, the interesting calls, Lior. And of course, we play them back on this show. We'll get to our first call for today right now. So I'm a branch manager for a major, one of the major banks. During COVID, we shut down. They're reopening the branch, but they've just said the branch is going to be shut down uh, permanently. They said no other branch management positions or positions that are of my level. They're making me work, obviously, till uh, the branch is shut down, but they're not going to give me my severance until a month from the uh, closing date. And they're expecting me to keep working and all that stuff. Wondering what my rights are here and what I should be expecting. I've, I've been a 15-year employee. I'm uh, just wondering what I'm expecting for uh, severance. Right. So it's a very good question. And, and he would have received what we call working notice. notice. So if you're getting advance notice that your employment is coming to an end, as long as the company puts that in writing and gets you a specific end date, a, a, an actual end date, not though in the next three months, they give you an actual date, you're on what we call working notice. That means that that notice, that notice that you've received does count towards your severance. So if you're owed uh, 20 months severance and you've received three months advance notice, that means the company still owes you 17 months in that example on the back end at the end of that notice. So for this gentleman that called us on our radio show, it's a question of how much advance notice did he in fact receive that his employment is coming to an end. The employer is going to have to make up that difference if there is a difference from a severance standpoint at the end of that period. So let's talk about how much he's actually owed, how much severance he's actually owed. Rather than me tell you, I can certainly tell you, but let's actually see how it's calculated. Let's go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca and let's plug his information in that uh, uh, tool that we have, our severance calculator tool. So he's a branch manager. He's been there for 15 years. You can see right at the bottom there that he's owed anywhere from 16 to 20 months of severance. 16 to 20 months. By the way, you can do the same for yourself. Just go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to calculate your severance. It's free and anonymous. Now, however many months he got his notice of his termination comes off the top. So if he got eight months, then that 16 to 20 months gets reduced by eight months. But the company is still going to have to make up the difference. And if they don't, if they don't make up the difference or they pay him less severance than they're supposed to at the end of the notice period, then that's a wrongful dismissal. So even if you've received termination with advance notice, you're not being walked out today. They told you your employment comes to an end at some point in the future. The company likely still owes you a substantial amount of severance at the end of that period of time. You want to know how much they owe you? Call me or, as I said before, just go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. You know, in the past in the show, we've often talked about the, the concept of working notice. Wasn't it wasn't that popular just for the fact that the company would have this person who's possibly disgruntled, no, they've got to stick around, there's bad blood, it might, you know, it might not work well, might not play with others in the sandbox very well for a year that he's going to be working to uh, work out that notice. But do you find that's kind of turned around now with the uh, pandemic or companies maybe a little more cash strapped, so they figured, I might as well get some work out of the guy, and rather than 12 months severance, I'll have him work it off for 12 months with that working notice? Yeah, you're spot on, John. Absolutely. I have seen more often over the last year or so since COVID uh, had, had really started impacting businesses that companies provide more uh, longer working notice. 
So that is something that they're allowed to do. A lot of businesses don't like that. Certainly a lot of employees don't necessarily like that. But legally, an employer can provide advance notice. It could be as much as two years advance notice. So an employer can do that. And I want you to remember as an employee, if you quit before that last date, then that's a resignation. And you would not be owed any severance even though it's the company that said that your employment is coming to an end. So to get severance, you actually have to stay till the last day. But before you do anything, if you've received notice, if you want to know if it's enough notice, if you want to know how much severance you're going to get at the end of the notice, two ways to do that, as I said, contact me, easy, or simply go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And we'll give you another way to reach out anytime, terminationquestions.com. That's the place, well, it's in the title. You can go there, ask your questions about employment law and termination. And Lior and a member of the team at the firm will we'll get to it. To get to the first one for today, Lior, this one comes from our pal Bonnie. She writes, I caught COVID-19 two months ago and was unable to get out of bed for weeks. My doctor says I'm still not well enough to go back to work. My insurance provider denied my LTD claim because they say I don't have enough evidence to prove that I'm still suffering. Now my boss is growing impatient and wants me back immediately. Can they fire me with two weeks pay over this, even after 18 good years with the company? So there's a lot to, to unpack here. And, yep. and many people that have had COVID will tell you that for many of them, it's not one of those things that it's over in a few days. Some of them have symptoms that persist for weeks and even months. So the reality is whether you were able to work or not is up to your doctor. So whether it's COVID-19 or anything, frankly, if your doctor says you're not well enough to work, doesn't matter what the condition is. In fact, you don't have to tell anyone what the condition is. Then you don't have to work. You can be off work. Now, her insurance company, disability insurer, if her doctor says she should not work, that should be enough for her insurance company. Oftentimes, insurance companies push because they'd rather not pay. They'd rather keep their money than, than pay it to you. So she needs to give us a call so we can talk about how we push her insurance company to pay her. That's why she has that coverage. That's why she's been paying into that coverage. So it's there for her when she needs it. Now, with respect to her employer, it doesn't matter what the employer wants. They cannot let her go because she's sick. They cannot let her go because she has a serious medical condition. As long as her doctor gives her a note saying that she cannot work, that's it. The company cannot do anything about it. They cannot push her, threaten her, or, or fire her. If they try, not only would that be a wrongful dismissal, that would be potentially a human rights violation as well. She needs to call me for now. Get a doctor's note. Make sure the doctor's note is clear that you cannot work. Once you're clear to return to work, provide another doctor's note saying you can go back. If anything is done to you, you want to give me a call and I'll take care of it. I'll give you that number as we get into a break here, 1-855-821-5900. And when we come back, we will get into what I talked about at the top of the show. Five things you should do if you've been fired, laid off, or let go from your job. That is on the way. This is the Employment Law Show. Don't go anywhere. People think you have to sign back a severance offer by a deadline. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Deadlines are used as a pressure tactic. Make sure the offer is fair before you sign. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. Can insurance companies deny long-term disability claims for mental illness? When you're suffering from a mental health disability, insurance companies just don't understand. But we do. They can absolutely not force you back to work. If your doctors say you are not ready and you know you're not ready, they cannot make you go back to work. If you have a mental health disability and your claim is denied, don't give up. Give us a call and let us fight for you. Go to disabilityrights.ca. Discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think contractors aren't owed severance. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Many contractors are actually employees and are entitled to full severance pay. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. Okay, welcome back. Employment Law Show. John Scholes, Lior Samfiru, and we're going to get to this, the five things you should do if you've been fired, you've been laid off or let go from your job. We had to whittle this list down from about 300. We could talk about this for show upon show upon show, but these are, uh, these are five big ones for sure, Lior. Here's the first one I'm going to give it to you, so we'll get into it. Make sure you have a copy of your employment agreement as well as any bonus structure plans, etc., right? So one of the things we have to do when you're let go is assess how much you're owed. What does your employer owe you 
because of the fact that they let you go, laid you off, terminated your employment, call it what you will. And to, to analyze that, one of the things we have to look at is your employment agreement and any other documents that specify terms of employment. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely helpful to have a copy at hand of your employment agreement or, or contract of employment. You may have signed that when you started working. Maybe you signed that during the course of your employment, but have a copy of that. Uh, if you don't have a copy accessible, it's okay to, uh, to ask HR. Send a quick note saying, I just realized I don't have a copy of my employment agreement. Just please send me a copy. They're not gonna have a problem with that. So have those documents available. You know, if there's a bonus plan document, have that available. Because once I look at that, it's gonna make my life that much easier so for me to review it and tell you, here is what you're owed. Can we get by without it? Maybe, but it's it's much easier to have that. So if you're lo losing your job, lost your job, or even are worried about losing your job, one of the things you want to arm yourself with is with all these documents that impact or speak to terms of employment, contracts of employment, employment agreements, bonus plan documents, anything mm -hmm. like that, good to have, have it with you. Then you send that to me so we can go over it together and discuss everything that you're owed. Okay, number two, here's what you got to do if you've been fired, let go, or laid off. You got to return all the company property and make plans to get your belongings out of the company, right? Absolutely. So that, that is something. And by the way, the reason why we mentioned this is companies can often get very upset if you don't return their property. It's not worth getting into an argument over that. If you have a company laptop or cell phone or other documents, return those, okay? Coordinate with the company. Maybe they'll want to pick it up themselves, send a courier. Maybe they'll want you to ship it and they'll pay you for the cost of, the, of shipping. So that's fine. Return whatever it is that belongs to the company. And by the way, if you have a company laptop, don't delete stuff off it. If you have a company USB key, don't delete stuff off of that. Not a good idea. It can just get you into trouble later on. By the same token, if you have company belongings, or sorry, if you have your belongings with the company, uh, what, your clothes, personal items, uh, uh, music uh, CDs or DVDs, whatever that is, speak to the company, make sure that they know what you have. They will have to make arrangements to box those things up and return them to you. In some situations, they, they may even make arrangements for you to come in after hours to retrieve your belongings, that is fine but never ever hold anything hostage for the company. They can't do that to you. You always want to deal with that quickly and, and properly because now we're going to get into the important stuff, which is your compensation, your severance. So we don't want the, the belongings to stand in the way of being able to get you what you're owed. And that brings us to number three, which is don't accept or sign any termination documents without getting legal advice. No kidding. No kidding. So here's what's going to happen, John. Uh, when the company lets you go, they're going to call you into a meeting, whether it's in person or maybe over Zoom these days, uh, and they're going to tell you, you know what, today is your last day. We're going to part mm -hmm. ways, and then they're going to give you some documents. Again, maybe they'll email those to you these days. Maybe they'll hand you in person. It'll be some documents, maybe two, three, maybe even five or six pages. And in that document, there's going to be a severance offer. They're going to ask you to accept what the company is offering you by signing a, a release. So we're offering you six months pay employee, but to get this, no, uh -uh, you have to sign this and sign this by Friday and return it to us and that's when we'll pay it. And that's a pressure tactic. Many people see that, read that, and they think, oh my gosh, I better sign this. I, I wanna have six months pay, so I better sign this or else I'm not gonna get it. And if I'm not gonna get it, how am I gonna pay my bills? How am I gonna pay my mortgage? How am I gonna put food on the table? All of that is understandable, of course. But here's the thing, what if I told you that instead of the six months pay that they've offered you, you're owed 18 months pay. Mm -hmm. And what if I told you that by signing that offer for six months pay, you've given up on your 18 months and you can never ever get it even though legally you are owed it. That's why under any circumstances, under no circumstances, should you ever ever accept that severance offer, sign off on that document. Once you do, irrespective of the pressure that I know you're feeling, irrespective of how bad it actually may be, You've given up your rights. And in the vast majority of cases, over 90% of cases, that severance offer is pennies on the dollar. Company is counting on the fact that you don't know any better. Well, if you're watching us now, you do know better. I've just told you. So please, under all any circumstances, do not sign it. Let's talk about it. Let me tell you what you're actually owed. It's not difficult to resolve that. Or you can even do this on your own. Just go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. All right, list of five quick things you should do if you've been fired, let go, or laid off from your job. And I guess number four is this, apply for EI, employment benefits. 
Exactly. Depending on the circumstances why you lost your job, there's going to be time limits for you to apply for EI before you could potentially compromise your ability to, to get it. Mm -hmm. So you apply for EI as soon as you can, you get your record of employment and apply. Now, depending on the amount of severance that you get, EI may not start or may not kick in right away. It may be a few months before you actually start getting money from EI, but you still have to apply for it as soon as possible. So don't sit on that. Don't wait on that. Uh, you know, you've paid into EI you, usually for many, many years, as long as you've been working. So yes, apply for EI as soon as possible to make sure you get it when you qualify for it. Uh, if you're not sure how to do that, we can talk about it. It's an easy process. You can do it online. There's, it's non-stress. You will get paid, but you have to actually apply. And finally, number five, we always talk about it outside even this list, and that is go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, learn about your rights, and then contact from there, right? Right. So we talked about severance, right? We talked about the fact that you need to accept uh, only adequate severance. You don't want to accept what they've offered because you're likely, very likely, owed more. And you can find out how much you're owed at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Take seconds, it's free and anonymous. But there's other things that you can find out uh, on pocketemploymentlawyer.ca that you need to check the termination on. For example, if the company said, oh, we're letting you go for cause, you did something bad, so we don't have to pay you any severance. Well, guess what? Pocketemploymentlawyer.ca allows you to actually find out if the company does, in fact, have cause. There's a tool there that allows you to find out is what you did cause. And if it's not, guess what? It's a wrongful dismissal. If you believe that they're letting you go for discriminatory reasons, well, we have a tool at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca that allows you to find out if really what you're experiencing is considered discrimination. If it is, that's a human rights violation. So pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, for that and for other reasons, is your, your best friend, is your, your first tool that you go to if you lost your job. If you're walked out of the office, you get in the car, you drive home, you get home, you pull out your smartphone, and you go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And if you want to, you can contact me directly from pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Lost your job, with or without cause. Good severance, bad severance. Uh, short service employee or long service employee. First thing you do, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Okay, Leo, before we go to a break, I want to get into uh, one more phone call from our radio show. Again, employmentlawyer.ca if you want to find a radio station near you that carries the show. Phone call number two is coming up right now. I was in a job where I had a salary, a base salary, and then about a 15% commission on top of my salary. Now, my severance, but they came back to say, no, the severance is going to be based on your salary because we're not going to be paying out incentives going forward. <laughs> no, -uh, can't do that, my friends. Sorry. If her compensation was based on salary plus commission, we will simply look at an average when in terms of calculating her severance. So if on average her salary and commission was $8,000 a month and she's right. owed 10 months severance, easy. 8,000 times 10 months, that gives us the severance that she's owed. The company doesn't get to change things in terms of severance, pay you less by saying, well, we're not going to include the bonus because we're not going to pay bonus. We're not going to pay commission because no one else is going to get commission. No, your severance is not based on what the company wants to pay you, what they think they should pay you. It's based on your total compensation, and it has to include all components of your compensation. So we're talking salary, of course, but we're also talking commissions benefits, bonuses, car allowance, anything else that you would have received as an employee of the company, any other perk, financial incentive, those have to be included, stock options, by the way, have to be included as part of your severance. Anything less than that, again, we're talking wrongful dismissal. Coming up here, short break, Lior, but I want to get into this. What are my rights if I'm on long-term disability and my company is shutting down? We'll tackle that after a short break. Employment Law Show continues, don't go anywhere. People think you aren't owed severance pay if you are fired for a reason. EmploymentLawyer.ca says that is a myth. Most for-cause terminations are false and you are still owed full severance. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at EmploymentLawyer.ca. How do you force insurance companies to pay long-term disability claims? Insurance companies deny legitimate claims all the time. They're playing the odds. They know that most people are just gonna walk away. Your insurer may ignore you, they may even ignore your doctors, but they can't ignore us. We know how insurance companies work. We know their weaknesses. 
we know how to use the legal process to force them to pay you what you're owed. Go to disabilityrights.ca, discover your rights, fight back, and get what you're owed. People think you are only owed two weeks' pay when you lose your job. Employmentlawyer.ca says that is a myth. You may be owed much more than two weeks per year. Don't settle for less. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And hey, welcome back, Employment Law Show, EmploymentLawyer.ca, the place to go to catch our radio show. Lior, phone call number three from the radio shows coming up right now. I just recently found out that our plan is shutting down, and I'm on long-term disability. Now, would I be entitled to a severance package? Been there 33 years. Ooh. Wow. I get that asked fairly often. I'm off work. I'm on a disability leave and I'm losing my job. Not because the company is doing anything wrong, they're not picking on me, they're shutting down or they're closing the department. So I'm losing my job, but I'm not working right now, I'm off. Do I get severance? Well, the answer, thankfully, is quite easy and straightforward. Yes, you absolutely get severance. You get severance as if you were still there. So based on what you would have expected to earn if you were still there, you know, we would look at what you earned before, and based on that, you have to get severance. Even though if you had not lost your job, you wouldn't have gotten paid, they have to pay you severance. Now, for this person, after 33 years, not only does he get severance, he probably gets the maximum, which is 24 months paid, two years paid. But not only does he get severance, John, he, he potentially could get slightly even more than the, the maximum, 24 months. The reason for that is because he's disabled right now, he's unable to work, it's going to be that much more difficult and it's going to take him that much longer to find another job. That is a factor. Because it's going to take him longer, he can get even more severance. Same with you. If you have a medical condition that's going to impact your ability to work or to find another job, that means even more severance than usual for you. So you have to get that advice if you lost your job. From an employment standpoint, if he's on a long-term disability, a lot of people think, okay, well, if, my, if the firm is shutting down, if my job is ending, then my LTD is ending too. But those are different, are they not? Absolutely. So that, the, yeah. that's a very important point to make. Once you qualify for disability, once you qualify for being on disability benefits, you can stay on those benefits until you no longer qualify, until you're no longer disabled or turn 65. If you lose your job in the meantime, you don't get disqualified from those benefits. So you don't have to worry about that. Once you're on disability, whatever happens to your status as an employee is not going to impact your disability be benefits. The only time you can get cut off disability is, number one, if you're no longer disabled, Number two, if you reach the maximum age, which usually is 65. And again, you guys, your other half, Savannah to market, of course, at Disability Law Show can cover that. If that's a problem, if that ever arises in the workplace as well, you've got both angles covered, right? My, my, my less handsome half, uh, Savannah to market, <laughs> a heads up our team at the, at the firm that deals yep. exclusively with these issues. And oftentimes, John, there's this interplay between yeah. employment issues and disability issues. You may get cut off by disability insurer, when they say, we think you should be working, when that's in fact not true, your boss hears about that and says, aha, the insurance company says you're able to work, so you better come back to work on Monday or we're going to consider you to have resigned. All this time, though, you can't actually work. Your doctor says you can't work. Well, we can help you with both those issues. Deal with the insurance company and deal with your employer. If you're facing dis disability issues, certainly if you're facing employment issues, give us a call. Let us do what we do. Good for another week, pal. 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca to reach out by email. And you can always go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. In fact, you should go there first, even before the phone call. We'll catch you again on the disability, on the Employment Law Show. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.